The AZA, or the Association of Zoos and Aquariums, is a not-profit organization dedicated to the advancement of zoos and aquariums in the areas of conservation, education, science, and recreation. Its care manual documents are considered the industry standard for how to care for animals. So taking the key facts and figures from these documents and applying them to real-world examples of zoo habitat layouts, squishing it all together and putting it into Planet Zoo should give us the quote-unquote perfect habitat in the game. This is Zoo School. Today's Zoo School, we are building a tiger habitat, specifically the Bengal tiger, although most of the information we're taking from the AZA is for tigers in general. The tiger was selected for the first episode by our patrons, so if you would like to choose the next animal on Zoo School, head over to patreon.com slash geekism. But the Bengal tiger, or Panthera tigris tigris, the population native to the Indian subcontinent, it is threatened by poaching, loss and fragmentation of habitat and it was estimated of comprising fewer than two and a half thousand individuals in the wild by 2011 but by 2018 the population had increased to an estimated 3,300 individuals mostly due to the fantastic conservation efforts of zoos around the world the Bengal tiger ranks as the biggest wild cat alive today. It's considered to belong to the world's charismatic megafauna, and it's the national animal of both India and Bangladesh. It is also known as the royal tiger. So let's dive in with lesson one. The AZA recommends a 12 meter square space for a tiger plus a 50% additional space for each animal after that. Actually seems really quite small giving you about 144 meters uh, space per animal. Uh, the layout that I've done here is loosely based on the Jacksonville Zoo and actually gives uh, the tigers as far as the game is concerned uh, about two and a half thousand <laughs> square meters so we've got ample room here for them. There should be multiple holding or shift facilities, uh, meaning you can move animals into different spaces as and when needed, especially if there are multiple adult cats. They should also have the ability to physically be separated permanently. This is often done now with multiple enclosures linked by cat runs, which create space for the cats and incredible interaction with guests. More on cat runs a little later, but to give the game the impression that we have multiple habitats here, but actually it's going to be one habitat because of how the game works we're going to use these doorway pieces here so if i can come into this building this is obviously just uh, uh for show at the moment but if i place these doors down the good thing about these doorways is that the uh the habitat the keepers habitat keepers can get through them but the tigers can't so if we now come on to the tiger's welfare you'll see that navigatable area goes way down uh, because they can't actually get through those gaps so both spaces are going to be open to both tigers but they're going to be able to get through them through a catwalk that we're going to have out the front of the habitat here there we go moving them out of there now they both have plenty of space to move around and eventually they'll be able to cross over into each other's section but it will give the impression of two completely separate habitats uh, which works well for that realism factor as far as group structure goes it is recommended by the aza that tigers are kept alone but a lot of zoos will keep them in small groups usually same-sex litter mates or mating couples that are now retired from reproduction other small mixed sex groups can be kept together with enough space and neutering uh, but individual personalities and aggression levels need to be considered We've gone for a boy and a girl here because we would like some little baby tigers, but this habitat should be suitable for an array of combinations. Two fantastic examples of catwalks that uh, are used for tigers to move from one habitat to another are the Philadelphia Zoo catwalk, which is more of a, a utilitarian look. It's more of a sort of net and, and metal. Uh, but then the incredible Jacksonville Zoo catwalk is uh, a real sight to behold. It's made to look like a dead strangler fig tree and it really is incredible. It has this huge structure in the middle with paths coming off from either side of it and I think is what we're going to try and replicate, although I don't think we're going to be able to get it perfectly in the game, mostly due to the animal's pathing AI. This that we have at the moment doesn't look anywhere near as ostentatious, but this is a proof of concept to basically make sure that the animals can get across. I believe this is as thin as I can make it with, uh, with the ability to 
still for the animals to make it across. And I'm hoping that uh, Aradea is now going to show us what that looks like. She's able to walk up there, which is pretty good. Okay, and then hopefully she's going to be able to get through here, which has got a glass bottom on it. It's quite tricky to see. The, uh, the keeper here is uh, able to see the space. Okay, so... She could. She got in there and was able to turn around. Didn't seem to want to go all the way. But if we take a look at the map, uh, I think the issue may well be is that the barrier itself currently doesn't actually uh, cover this area. So it's actually showing it that uh, that she's not able to get across. Right. Okay. Fixed that issue, and this young chappy here is proving for us perfectly that the system seems to work. Let's come down and just check at that. Oh, look at that fantastic view. Yeah, unfortunately, I would like to get it a little thinner. The ones in real life do seem to be almost a tiger's width, uh, basically. But look at him jumping his way through there. That looks fantastic. The fix for that, by the way, I'm going to go through it because a lot of people don't know that this is a, f a possibility in the game. So if we come into here, edit barrier, you'll see now that we've got a null barrier across here. And this outer circle is the actual habitat barrier. And that's what they're going to be using to calculate pathing and, and spacing and things like that this barrier here is no longer part of the habitat and that's through a little option here called habitat perimeter turned off so all I've gone to is select all of this so it still works as a physical barrier but I can click here and select it to not be part of the habitat barrier and uh, and then if you look at the uh, the spacing here they can get all the way through here and across and they've got the full use of the, of the habitat while still keeping two separate areas as far as the tigers are concerned. And basically that's going to make them use this tunnel more often than not. After a bit more work, we've got the uh, the viewing area here and the tunnel pretty much complete. Um, I would like to have done more detail on it, but quite frankly, the second you move in any more or even play some stuff on the outside of it, uh, it becomes unreachable uh, for the tiger. So at the moment, it has to stay pretty much as open and as empty as this. So I think a lot of our theory, a lot of our, a lot of our um, theming, excuse me, uh, will come from around the area. So at the moment, it does look a little plain, but I think once the whole area is done, it'll actually look pretty good. And of course, uh, the main thing is that the tigers do make their way through, which one of them is doing quite nicely here. Are you going all the way? Yeah, look at that. Uh, so we've got a nice glass area that uh, the tiger will use, giving you some really awesome views of the beast as it comes through. Absolutely fantastic. Look at that. And my only real worry now is that it doesn't poo in there. Because if it does, we may struggle because this guy ain't getting through it. Water plays an important part in a tiger's lifestyle. Tigers are one of the few big cats that actually enjoy water, lazing in shallows to cool down and diving into deeper areas for fun and enrichment. Tigers do tend to defecate in water though, so any water features should be well filtrated, easily cleanable and drainable. As its deepest, the water should be more than one meter, with a sloped area for ground level to one point. Uh, extra drinking water facilities should be provided as tigers love to swim. This would be a great opportunity to create an underwater viewing area. These aren't too common in real zoos, but can provide spectacular views. A really great example of this is at Australia Zoo, and that's what we're going to take and add into our exhibit in the game. So we've got a uh, now one of the walls here is now completely glass or at least glass with concrete posts and we now have a water viewing area and uh, we've even made it so that we could put on maybe little educational talks here nothing too crazy this isn't like a sea lion show no seats necessarily just sort of uh, concrete steps that people can take a seat on that's why this little chap is here to get the sizing on those right but you can come down here a school troop can come down they can learn all about the tigers there's some fantastic footage online of bengal tigers div uh, diving into deeper water uh, for food and uh, enrichment items whilst the uh, zookeepers talk about the animals so that's what i've kind of gone for here gone for a very serviceable uh, water space most zoos are like this if you look now obviously the, a lot of the ones we build in the game are, are more sort of naturalistic but really this is how they often are because they will very often be drained 
So we have some large drains here that can be opened up. Then we get drained and scrubbed, so that's why we've gone for concrete. Now it does look a little bit uniform at the moment, but once we've got some foliage and rock work around it, I think it'll actually fit into the area really nicely. But that's um, definitely the sort of last of the major infrastructure going in, really, before we can start making the place look nice. <laughs> Both wet and dry moats can be used to contain big cats, but obviously wet moats here with tigers still have to have a sheer face uh, because they do and can and enjoy swimming. So unlike a lot of primates, you can't use purely water as a way of containing them. They should be a minimum of 7.6 meters or 25 feet wide with smooth sides and a depth of just over 4 meters or 14 feet. All walls should be around 5 meters tall at 16 feet and if uh, if possible a topmost meter turned in at 45 degree angle towards the habitat to give you that extra bit of safety all areas should feature secondary fencing where applicable to stop guests from being able to access primary containment so with that in mind, we've worked out a little bit more of our water area slash viewing zone. We've placed down the fence here. I think I might have shown you some on the last one anyway, just to stop them being able to bang necessarily so hard on the glass. Uh, we've also done a bit more fencing around here and started to do some work, foliage work, covering up the, uh, the building here with a, a nice sort of log on wisteria kind of thing and then began the layout of another viewing area here more traditional viewing area but again using that secondary fencing to stop them being able to people to get right up to the glass but the idea of a dry mode is something that really interests me and something i think we're going to try and do here and maybe incorporate it with a terrain smoothed uh, area up to this side of the tunnel rather than using uh, the, uh, the, the the bridge like we have done here. Originally this had rope all the way down it. Uh, unfortunately the uh, the tigers get a little bit freaky when they <laughs> when they kind of climb over the top of the rope. Uh, so we're going to leave that a little bit more open like so. But I think the, uh, the juxtaposition of a natural step up on one side to a bridge on the other will be quite nice. So we're starting to get there. Let's see if we can do a nice dry moat here uh, as recommended. Our dry moat is in, as well as the terrain working its way up to the uh, the catwalk there. Really happy with how this has turned out. It looks a little bare at the moment, and obviously we need a fence uh, along the front here to stop our naughty little guests jumping in. But uh, overall, the layout has turned out really quite nicely, and it's filled up this space pretty well. We've also dragged the wall up so that it's now at the height that the AZA uh, recommends. Uh, lots of other little things have happened off camera though also I just want to point out. Um, a lot of the colour scheme I've gone back over and uh, and sort of really focused on this natural wood and then lighter uh, but slightly more modern idea of wood. Um, this is a big thanks to Pond Shrimp, awesome content creator. You need to go and check her out if you haven't already. There will be a link in the description to her channel. Um, I was throwing around a few ideas and I just messaged her and said would you mind having a look at this for me because it isn't quite coming together and I think the problem with this series is going to be that because we're drawing lots of disinformation from lots of different zoos that it does look a little bit of a hot mess so it did take me a little moment to kind of go back and add a lot of it together so a lot of the colors have changed uh, here now we've got a, uh, a nice sort of modern slash rustic wall garden uh, that I think works really quite nicely and now it's going to be a case of taking some of the materials here from this feature piece and using them elsewhere so for instance here we've got some of that uh, plaster and breeze block decals here and on the edging of the seats as well to kind of carry the design through the build and I really do appreciate Pond Shrimp's help there on there giving me a little bit of focus which sometimes a second pair of eyes can really help with. The final thing we need to look at doing then is furnishing the actual exhibit now furnishing doesn't mean they're going to have tables and chairs to sit at furnishing is the term the AZA uses for basically everything that goes inside a habitat <laughs> No real bedding is required for tigers, although they do prefer to sleep off the ground. Platforms one meter and up are suitable. Other suitable trees, logs and rocks should be provided to encourage natural behaviors such as scratching and scent marking. It's common for these to take the appearance of temple ruins, but this is purely for the spectators' benefits. The tigers obviously don't care. Uh, although not common, tigers have been known to climb trees, so bear this in mind when placing them near exhibit edges. 
we're not going to be going for a temple build, although there are some really great examples out there. But personally, I prefer a more naturalistic approach to the animal's space. So really, we're just going to furnish this with lots of different foliage options and some rock work that we've sort of started here and maybe some sort of logs and things that they can use to scratch and have fun with. And then obviously some of the in-game enrichment items as well. Uh, then the last thing we need to do is finish off this building and some of the uh, the guest facing areas as well, such as some foliage. But I think we are nearly ready to wrap this one up. I think we are done just as one of our tigers has a little rompy romp through the uh, through the catwalk. Uh, really happy with how this one turned out in the end. So the last few things we had to do uh, were the foliage, lots of bamboo, lots of palms. Uh, that sort of Asian tropical vibe is what we've gone for here. And then also we've taken the uh, the roof from the catwalk and uh, placed that around with some structure underneath it to create some uh, coverage. Um, here we've specifically gone for Bengal tigers. Now tigers can be found all over the world in all different biomes and shapes and sizes. So this will vary a little bit on, um, on the type of tiger you are building for. But with Bengal tigers, they live in temperate tropical climates. So depending on the zoo's location, uh, you might have to artificially increase the temperature in some areas. The indoor area where temperature can be controlled is recommended as far as the AZA is concerned, as well as hot rocks, which are rocks that are often heated from underground water pipes for the cats to lay on in the cooler times. So we've got a couple of those around sort of spaces where the cat can come and lay on if they want to. Obviously, they're not actually heated. Uh, the temperature is relatively moderate here for them, uh, which is fine. Uh, also, lots of shade areas for getting out of the hottest midday sun. So we have these two set shade areas, then also the shade underneath the climbing platform there, and there's also natural shade from the foliage. And the AZA recommends that there should be more shaded areas than there are cats in the exhibit to allow all creatures to access a private spot to chill out. So overall, I'm really happy with how this one has turned out. Uh, we've kept the building here at the back relatively serviceable, uh, with the idea being from a ground level, from a sort of guest point of view, you actually very rarely see it. And when you do, it's very small, little spots of it, uh, otherwise covered by foliage or buildings. So here we've got a sort of nook under, uh, not underground necessarily, but just an undercover area to view the tigers from here. You can see one just having a little lace over there. The, uh, the second viewing area is an open area using a, uh, a dry mode to create a real nice overview of the space. Uh, maybe throw some um, bits of meat and stuff down there to get the uh, tigers interacting with the guests. Obviously we have the catwalk moving across which I think has turned out really quite well. Like I say, we're a little limited there in what we can do uh, regarding the uh, the structure and actually getting the animals through it, but I think it's turned out pretty good. And then finally, we've got the uh, the section down here for uh, for water here, where the uh, where the, this poor janitor is stood at the moment. But we can have sort of uh, water shows of the animals here for school children or just sort of a few times a day they can have a show there we go so i hope you've enjoyed this one i hope uh, you appreciate the sort of um mix of the uh, care manual guidelines and inspiration from real zoos here we've really gone to try to go in depth with the information here to give you something a little bit special so i really hope you've enjoyed it if you have please let me know in the comments let me know if you'd like to see more of these uh, the animal we have chosen again uh, has been picked by patreons so if you would like a say in what animal we do next here on zoo school make sure you check out patreon.com slash geekism other than that thank you so much for watching hope you've enjoyed it until the next one be good bye